Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and I wanted to start up my new series by installing Linux from Windows. So basically it's not just a normal, hey, I'm gonna format my computer and install Linux type thing. It's gonna be more like, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to Windows before you move and format your computer to install Linux. Yeah, so let's get started. So before we begin, I do want to mention one of my friends on my Discord channel that he actually created a game for Android. It's basically a ball moving through these pegs and you have to get through each level. And I could be sure to tell you that there is more than five levels because that's as far as I got. But yeah, I'm super proud of him because he has minimal coding experience and for him to create a game with 3D and all this physics stuff, it's, it's really cool. I have the link in the description below if you wanna check that out. And like I said, he's on my Discord. So if you guys got any concerns or questions or upgrades to their game, join my Discord and ask him directly yourself. All right, so to get started, I will be actually using uh, Latte Panda. So if you guys are not familiar with this board, I have videos of this board reviewed a couple of times and I've actually installed Linux and Mac and stuff on this. It is running an Intel Core M3 7Y30 with eight gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of MMC, which is more than enough to install Linux. And the reason why I'm choosing this board, it's because it's already pre-installed with Windows and I don't have any serial keys or anything to do with this. And that leads up to what we need to do before we install Linux. This isn't gonna be the final build on the Linux tutorials that we are gonna be doing. I actually have a Ryzen 1700, which is my old computer. And I recently upgraded my computer to a 3700X, which I'll insert photos right here. But my old computer is actually gonna be converted to my Linux tutorial machine, basically. I'm gonna be installing graphic cards, all that stuff, all the good stuff. But for now, let's uh, deal with this Latte Panda. So there are a lot of Linux flavors. I say flavors, that means distros. There are a lot of different distros and, and everyone has its pros and cons. And what we're choosing today is Ubuntu Budgie. Now, the reason why I'm using Ubuntu Budgie, it's because it's more similar to a Windows base. So transitioning from Windows to Linux wouldn't be as hard because we still got the start menu and the clock and all the other stuff that you might be used to so you can navigate around. There are other Linux distros that are similar to that, which is uh, Linux Mint and also Cinnamon, but I feel that Budgie is a little bit more I don't know, I like the UI a little bit more. That's just my personal preference. But you could always check other distros out. There's like Manjaro and uh, Solus. They both use Budgie, which is the same desktop as this. And also a lot of other ones that I usually check on Distro Watch. But I do recommend using this if you're transitioning from Windows. It's just an easier move. So now that we know what distro we're gonna be using, head over to the download page and you're gonna see that there are different numbers. There's 18, 19, and 1910. The numbers are not just there because it's there. There, it actually means certain things. The first set of numbers mean what year it's created, and the last two is what month. Now the year does matter as well because there's every even number means long-term support for Ubuntu, and the short, uh, the odd numbers mean it's experimental builds. And then you have the month, which is April and then October. Those have different meanings as well, which one's more buggier or not, that's how I consider it. So I'm gonna choose for 1904 and it only has a two year support. So that means in two years, I have to upgrade it. But for the 18, like I said, long-term support lasts up to 10 years. As we're downloading this file, we're also gonna do some other stuff, which is grab our product key. If you're gonna be installing this on a laptop where you don't have the product key or you're like me, where they, decide to put the product key under the laptop and your leg just rubs off all the numbers, you're gonna need this little command, which I'll leave in the description below, and that will actually fetch the product key. Next thing we need to do is uninstall everything. You're like, why are we gonna uninstall? We're gonna format it anyway. Certain products like Norton Antivirus or Microsoft Office, where you're license bound, it requires you to uninstall it from the device, or you're gonna get that error message when you install it again, that somebody, some other computer is using it. So be sure to uninstall everything that you paid for. Like anything that required a license, just uninstall it from your computer so it could release the license. So after you're done uninstalling everything and downloading everything, download another program called Etcher. Now this program, I'll leave a link in the description, will actually burn the image into your USB. So I'm using a Micro Center 16 gigabyte USB 3 USB. So anything above eight gigabytes, you're fine because most images are about four gigabytes. So it gives you a little bit of room to play with. All right, so now we're ready to restart the computer once everything's done. 
and we're going to go to the BIOS and select the drive that you need to boot up from. Now, most modern BIOS, you just have to hit, I think, delete F1 or F2 or anything like that. Choose the boot up drive and then I would choose USB. Through there, you just hit install budgie and then go through the menus. Now, the menus are very, very simple. Um, it's basically asking what language, what type of keyboard, and where you want to install it. There's also a section where you could join the Wi-Fi right now and also update your image as you're installing. So that's also cool. Once you're done with that, at the end, you would username and password and ask if you want to log in automatically or if it requires username or password. I normally do username and password because if you're going to install this on a laptop, you don't want any guy could just open your laptop and get it. So that's just your preference. If you're using it on something and you don't want to type in your password, this is where you do it. And once you're done, it's gonna ask you to reboot and that is it, you're gonna be in your new system. And here we are booted up to a new system and all we have to do is just type in the password to get in and that's basically it. All right, so this looks very similar to what you're probably used to in Windows with the menu, other than the menu being on top, but it's fine because you can actually adjust everything to your liking. One of the biggest things about Linux is that you could customize everything you want. And I don't, if I don't like how this looks or how the font looks, everything could be changed around, which is uh, what's one of the best features in Linux that you don't have in Windows. Now, just going through this real quick, I do want to show you something. Uh, this usage analyzer. Check this out. After you install the entire drive, you're only using six gigs, which is pretty impressive because just a standard Windows install, that's about like 14 gigs or so. So six gigabytes, that leaves you a lot more room, especially for like older laptops that you want to try this on. Um, they do still come with normal internet applications like Firefox. Uh, you have some office applications like uh, Writer or you know Excel, they call it Cal. But I do like using LibreOffice, LibreOffice if I'm saying that wrong. I'm, I'm not gonna go too deep into the operating system right now. So one of my biggest pet peeves about Windows is their software management. There is no software management at all. From Windows updates, you have to go to one section. And then if you want to get apps, you have to go to the Windows Store. And if it's not in the Windows Store, you actually have to go directly to the website. And that's one of the things about Linux or most Linux distro has figured out, which is a software center. And in Ubuntu Budgie or even in Ubuntu itself, they have a software center where everything is all in one spot and you have your categories if you wanted to install vlc media player or if you wanted to install another browser it's all in one spot as well as upgrading your entire system you don't have to navigate to nine different areas and you know the application is going to be there granted there are some applications that you can't uninstall unless you compile it but that's again a story for another time most notably anything that i want to search for you will be able to find. So even if I wanted to use Microsoft Visual Code or even uh, Notepad++, you should be able to install whatever you need and it will get it up and going. Just that in itself is a huge bonus. That's it. It doesn't take too much to install this guy. One of the things I will check if you guys are on uh, laptops is the power management. Um, does the brightness level work? Does the function keys work? Certain things like that I would definitely try because each laptop has its own way of getting that working. And if it doesn't work in your instance, you might want to go Google your laptop and what Ubuntu you're using and maybe they have a quick fix for it because like Lenovo's, their power management is completely different. So you need to install a Lenovo power manager just to get the uh, sleep and everything working so for laptops uh, you might want to check that first but otherwise you should be good to go so if you guys enjoyed this video please hit that like button i will be doing a lot more linux tutorials to help you transition from windows to linux stuff like showing you how to install windows applications or how to install steam and games or i don't know stuff like that i will be transitioning into and showing you guys how to do all that stuff that way you're not missing out on some of the windows applications that you need not all windows applications work but that's a story for another time well if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and i do want to know what do you think of this style of recording where i'm hand holding the camera and kind of talking more fluidly and stuff like that i don't know 
let me know in the descriptions below and um, also as i say in my nerd cave hack till it hurts <laughs>